Hallelujah. Well, he did call me the cowboy. And now Sister Linda, when she got up there a few moments ago, started talking about this old song. Well, I'm going to tell you what now. There may be a little dust on the bottle, but don't let it fool you about what's inside. All right, I got amen. Holy Ghost power from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. And the glory of God is in this place. The glory of God is here. He's present to heal. He's present to heal here right now. I'd like to welcome our audience on Facebook. Uh, and uh, what, what do we got? YouTube. Facebook and YouTube. You know, but it's... Uh, this is... I want to welcome all you saints to the divine teaching and healing service that we have here. And God charged us to do that. What do you tell old Peter? He says, feed my lambs. Yes. Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Feed my flock. So that's what we're endeavoring to do here. And it is a divine healing service. And we can. So we've got a, I've got a couple testimonies that I'd like to, to get. Brother Eddie, if you'd come up here. To show you that this is just not all hype. That God is doing things in this house. Come on up here, Ed. Now in the divine healing service last month, Eddie come up in the healing line and uh, it wasn't to get hands laid on him. It was, what did you tell me, Eddie? Well, Cowboy, I told you that the uh, last checkup I had at Hollowbeam Hospital, my eyesight has improved. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. There's a healing process sometimes. Sometimes it's instantaneous and sometimes it's suddenly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going I'm to get there in a minute. The, the Lord is always present to heal. The yes. thing is, we don't always receive it. That's true, because I had little doubts, but not anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give him some praise in the house. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank the Lord that he's restoring Eddie's eyesight yes. in the fearful and wonderful manner that he created Eddie in the womb with. Yes. Eyesight being restored in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Eddie. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there you go. Sis? Get done. I've got to, I've got to stay over here. It's one of my intentions, but I've got to stay in the frame for J-Dub. Thank you. Because I don't want to make my sound mad. Mad. He's gone now. I can go watch it. <laughs> Not getting the no, 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 David. <laughs> Sister, what have you got to tell us? Well, I. The green? Yeah. Go. Uh, green, go. Okay, so a lot of times when you see me come up front for prayer and stuff, it, it's very seldom that it's for myself. I'm always standing in body for somebody. And I've had two fabulous circumstances here lately. My first is a, a little boy named Hank. Hank's grandma came to my daughter. My daughter is a great witness to people in the hospital and stuff. She's always trying to minister and, and brags about her Uncle Dave and, and his healing practices, you know, through God that he does. And so people come to Jessica and say, can your mom get an anointing cloth for us? And so Hank's grandma came and said, we really need prayer. Becky is due to have Hank in a few months, but they there's something going on with Hank that they can't um, explain and they are encouraging her to abort. They want her to abort this child. And I, and I said, 
we're, we're on this. I said, we're going to start praying. And I have to tell you, the day that I stood in body for Hank's mom, when my brother laid hands on me, I got ill to my stomach. I was sick. And I, after church, I immediately took this anointed cloth to the hospital and we got it in Grandma's hands. And it was with Mom from the time, it, through all that time. And the second that Hank was born, it went with Hank. Hank was born with obvious tumors on the outside of him, but the other things that they were talking about, had, they were gone already. But I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry, because this is a, an amazing story. But when they, they decided that they were going to take Hank, but they hadn't decided if they were just going to induce labor or if they were going to do a C-section. And I sent that word back to Grandma. I said, you make them take Hank a C-section. I said, they are already, they are already preaching doubts into this, into this child. I said, you tell them to take this child because at, at C-section, because they're not even guaranteeing that they're going to cut that umbilical cord and this child's going to live. Well, not only is this child living, all the tumors have been removed. Hank is on his own. And at one point, he had a little slip back, and his dad started to speak negativity. And I said, you stop. You stop. Now you start praising God. Praise him Hallelujah. for everything that he has done. Yes. God didn't have us to pray to these people. Yes, he I, did. And, Amen. and that's what I tell my prayer warriors too. When I when I go to my prayer warriors about something, and we see a little bit of results, I said, "Don't stop there." I said, "You start praising him right now. You praise him in this same voice." And then I have another little girl, Faye. I'm Faye's army right here. Faye is three years old and was diagnosed with leukemia. And she's also another uh, child from AB Hospital that my sister knows, I mean, my daughter knows the aunt. Well, they got Faye down to Children's Hospital and they started aggressively giving her chemo right away and everything. And praise the Lord, Faye is now cancer free. Before they even finished the chemo, and I said, start praising him. Don't stop, start praising him. Thank you. Thank you. Let's praise God right now. Let's thank Him. You know, He, he told us that those that believe, these signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. You shall lay hands on the sick. Now, baby Hank, when uh, my sister did call me and ask me, she said, Brother, would you lay hands on the cloth and take it to baby Hank? And she came over to my to my house and she brought her granddaughter with her so I laid hands on it and I prayed over it to my granddaughter my niece as they were listening and everything and we're, and we're to teach when we're doing these things and I laid hands on that cloth and I prayed the prayer of faith the prayer of agreement and the anointing power went out of me. I anointed that cloth with oil. Well, I took, because my sister's granddaughter's there, I opened up my Bible and I said, JC, this is what we just did. Acts chapter 19. I said, James chapter 5. I said, see, and this is the confidence that we can have. Oh, God. When we follow his instructions, that he'll watch over his word and perform it. Yeah. Can I get a praise in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a good God. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. Anyway, the Lord uh, led me in, in the, at the last healing service. And it, this is really not the way I was going to go this time. I was going to going to preach on casting all your cares upon him and the Lord had a different idea because in the in the healing line last time I'd laid hands on a person 
I believe they're healed. And I'm done. And I know they're healed. I know that. I know that they are healed. I know they're healed because it says, tells me in my Bible that by His stripes I, that I'm healed. Amen. Not past tense, present tense. Mm -hmm. I'm healed now. Mm -hmm. But the pastor said something about forgiveness. Well, that just went to thundering off in my head. <laughs> you know, the Lord gets after you. Amen. He's proud of you. Brother, brother, brother Rain now, he chasing so as he loves. You know, now this is where I want you to go. So the title of the message today, today is Forgiving is Forgiving. For, in quotation marks, giving is forgiving. And that's a principle that works in the kingdom of God. Amen? Am I talking to somebody here? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave mm -hmm. His only begotten Son mm -hmm. that whoever believes in Him should have everlasting life. Now Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world. So we got to quit condemning ourselves. Are you hearing that? But this mess that Adam brought us into, God gave His, His way out of it. Because God, from the very beginning, wanted a family. And He started on down this road of getting His family back. Am I talking to somebody here? Come on. Well, if you want to stand with me, Let's uh, go to the Word of God and look at the fifth chapter, the 17th verse. Through the 26th verse. On a certain day, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby who had come from every town of Galilee, Judea, and from Jerusalem. Don't you know that the best donkeys of all Israel were tied in front of the house that day to the hitching rail? We got to keep it well. Come on. <laughs> and the power of the Lord was present to heal the sick. Now some men brought in a bed, brought in on a bed a man who was paralyzed. They searched for ways to bring him in and lay him before him. When they could not find a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiles with his bed into their midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is he who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, <clears throat> he answered them, Why question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately. Say immediately. Immediately. He rose up before them and took up that on which he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. They were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen wonderful things today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to minister 
to teach your people. Lord, I pray that this word that goes forth today, the seed, the seed of your word, that it would land on soil that has been prepared, that has been prepared. And if it is just being planted this day, that it is in good ground. And Lord, if the seed is already planted, that this word would water it. And Lord, you will give the increase. Yes. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I find some, some pretty interesting things here in this chapter. And the power of the Lord is present to heal the sick. And I said just a little bit earlier, the power is always there. It's on the, our receiving end. It's where we get messed up. And I'm not saying that all healings are instantaneous. Brother Eddie is going through the process. You know, when sin is attached, it's a, sin is sickness. Sickness is sin in the body. And when it's attached to itself, your body has grown accustomed to these things mm -hmm. at times. Yeah, yeah. And it's a process at times to go through this. Okay. To be rid of it. Yeah. So we can't, we can't believe the lies of the devil. You know, he'll be a coming in and telling us, You know, you're not healed. But that's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says we are healed. Yes. It says in 1 Peter 24, He Himself bore His sins on the cross that we should live unto righteousness. And by His stripes we were healed. Now, I've got a saying that what he bore, I need not bear. Amen? Amen? Amen. Matthew 8, 17 says, He himself bore my sicknesses and diseases and carried them away. Amen. Hello? Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Make some noise. Amen. Yeah, Amen. hallelujah. What he bore, I need not bear. Amen. Now some men brought in a man. A man who was paralyzed. They searched for ways to bring him in and lay him before him. You know, the he avenue to healing is not always the same way. Amen. It's not always the same way. We've got the name. We have the blood. We have the laying on of hands. We've got the oil. Breaks the yoke. God, has, He's provided for us. And I, and I like that. In the handout today, God wants 100%. But He doesn't ask you to do more than 100%. If I get going... Over 100%, I'm getting into self will and I'm playing God. Okay. I do all I can, I do all He's instructed to me to do, and then I believe yes. Yes. that He's going to do it. Yes. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. I believe that He's going to do it. Yes. Amen? Amen? Now they tore a hole and see and this is I'll tell you what I, I hang around quite a bit here with the disciples and apostles in the New Testament and stuff and these are called the synoptic gospels because of similarities in all these. But when he said he saw their faith he said to them 
Men, your sins are forgiven you. Yes. Forgiveness is a powerful force in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. That was a good spot. Amen. Amen. I said, Sister Linda. Thank you, cowboy. You call me Jesus. But the power that is here, the power to heal, and the power of forgiveness, is by one spirit. It's the same Spirit who deals to all men. Amen. Each of these given. Yes. Yes. It says, man, your sins are forgiven you. I like it. I like it in Matthew's little bear, better where he says, son, mm -hmm. be of good cheer. Yeah. Your sins are forgiven you. Yeah. You know what? In the King James, that cheer is courageous. It's courage. When we're going through some of these things sometimes, oh, yes. got, you've got to be courageous. Oh, yes. You can't back down. Because the fiery darts of the enemy are going to be coming at you. Hello? Amen. Yeah, I got some Pastor May back there. She, knows, she likes it. Yeah, she's, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, indeed. But the scribes and the Pharisees began to question. Who is he who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now see, if you, if you hang around this New Testament, the four Gospels quite a bit, they're in Jesus' house. Because yeah. if you look in Matthew, he had come in from ministering. Uh -huh. And it says he came in to come up Capernaum. And he was in his house. Uh -huh. Now these guys just tore the roof off his house. <laughs> Is that a, a reason to get angry? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Somebody tears something up of mine. I get angry. <laughs> we can't be doing that. Because one step out of love is a step, step into hate. In Galatians 5 6, he says, in faith works by love. We get healing by faith. Help yes. us, Lord. Are you hearing? Come on. Right, right. Yeah. Help us, Lord. And I, I'm going to tell you now, God takes His forgiveness seriously. Yes. yes. Very, very serious. Yes. And like I say, Jesus was in His house in Capernaum. And we have to look in the settings that Jesus is teaching sometimes. This is not a hostile environment where Jesus is at. Mm -hmm. He gets in some of these other ones when he'd be journeying to Jerusalem and stuff for the feasts. He's stopping synagogues and teach and he's doing miracles and these guys are saying, why are you doing this on the Sabbath? You've got six other days to do this. But Jesus always had a, a kind word to say to him. Well, don't you loose your ox on the Sabbath and let him get a drink of water? All right. Hello? Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're to set people free. We're not to keep them in bondage. Amen. Amen. Then he asked, he asked him, he says, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or say, rise up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, rise up and walk. And pick up your bed and go to your house. 
Now, who can forgive sins but God alone? If any of you got your Bible open, if you want to look at John 20, 23, and this is what Jesus spoke to them, to the disciples. This is before he is getting ready to ascend. In the 22nd verse, he says, and he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. And he says, the sins of any you forgive are forgiven. The sins you retain are retained. Did you think about that? You think about it a little bit. If you retain those sins, if you won't forgive this person, aren't you drinking that poison yourself? You're the retainer of those sins. And, this, and he tells us in Matthew 16, 19. This is what John, see, we go through these Gospels and they're a little different. And you need to say, this is Matthew 16, 19. He says, Behold, I have given you the keys to the kingdom to bind and to lose. And whatever you bind on heaven on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Amen? Amen? Are you tracking with me now? Then he goes on. And we'll go over there we'll take a look at this for a minute. In the 18th chapter of Matthew. I believe it's the 18th verse. If I'm wrong, shame on me. It says, truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Amen. Again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are assembled in my name, there I am in the midst. Yeah. And my old buddy Peter. He's a good guy, you know. And I get myself in these messes too, just like old Peter. When I like that, I'm, I'm ready for an attaboy. <laughs> <laughs> then Peter came to him and said, Lord, this is the 21st verse. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times? <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but he, yeah, good. <laughs> he just tells him seven times seventy, yeah. four hundred and ninety times. <laughs> you know, and then Jesus, he's talking. I'm kind of talking today. I'm not getting plum preachy, plum wound up, but I'm just oh, yeah. kind of talking. <laughs> and then Jesus, Jesus tells us. He explains to us. You know, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to sell accounts with his servants. When he began to sell the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him, owed him 10,000 talents. But since he was not able to pay, his master ordered that he would be sold with his wife and their children and all that he had in payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, pleading with him, saying, Master, have patience me, with me, and I will pay you everything. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of the fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and entreated him, saying, 
have patience with me and I will pay you everything. But he would not and went and threw him in prison until he could pay his debt. So when his fellow servants saw what took place, they were very sorry and went and told their master and all that had been taken. Then the master, after he had summoned them, said to them, Oh, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had had pity on him? His master was angry and delivered him to the jailers, and he should pay all his debt. So my heavenly Father will do to each of you from your heart. You do not forgive your brother for his trespasses. Yes. Amen. 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 What was the cost? You know, we sang that song. Mm -hmm. I'll never know mm -hmm. how much it cost to see my sins upon that cross. Yes. We had a debt we couldn't pay. Yes. He had a debt he couldn't know, didn't know. Mm -hmm. And he took it all for us. Do we not do the same? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's just... My God. Makes you want to believe. Yeah. You know, and Pastor May used the one about loving to hate a little bit. You know, it's these little things. It's, it's not the elephant in the kitchen. All right. We... Recognize those sins. Yeah. But it's the ants in the pantry. These little things. They're adding up. Adding up. Adding up. And you're wondering why you're not getting your healing. You're wondering why you're not getting increase in your checking account. And your finances. Why your family's deteriorating. I tell you, he takes his unforgiveness sins seriously. Amen. In Mark 11, 20, 25, he says, When you are praying, believe what you have prayed, and it will be granted to you. But he puts a little kicker in there that we don't like. <laughs> we should. Because forgiving is for our giving. Remember that? Yeah. Our forgiving is for He did it all for us. Yes, he did it for himself. Because he wants, God wants his family back. Yeah. And he provided us with the avenues. To get all this. Yes, amen. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. Mm -hmm. So that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your sins. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven mm -hmm. forgive your sins. Unforgiveness is the only sin that will keep you out of hell. Well, I'll say, well, it's blasphemy in the Spirit. Well, this is true because God provided us the avenue through Jesus Christ. This is blasphemy in the Spirit. When you deny the Son of God, God cannot forgive you. You're on the highway to hell. This is what... It, it's not that complicated. This is the Holy. This is what is blaspheming the Holy Spirit is. God can because there will not be any sin in heaven if you do not believe that God sent His Son to redeem you, yes. to pay the debt for you, to buy you back yes. all that you have done, all that He has done for you. Are you hearing me? Yes. This is the blaspheming. Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, God takes this seriously. Amen. 
I'm going to go on down through here a little bit more now. Luke 5. Because the Lord is always present to heal. Mm -hmm. I've said this. Yeah. And he said to the paralyzed man, I say, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately, he rode before them and took up on which he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Yes. Immediately. And this sometimes happens. I said earlier, God does not always do it the same way. Yes. And you sometimes you'll say, Brother Cowboy, I don't have the faith to be healed like you have. Well, I'm going to tell you, you do. If you break your leg and you go to the doctor and he puts it in the cast, he says, in four or six weeks, you'll be healed. You believe him. Yeah. You have faith for healing. Yeah. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of you all get colds. Flu during flu season. Glory to God, I haven't had one of those in seven or eight years. Amen? I say they can thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But it's not, I, I took that word of truth and I made it mine. But you got a cold, you say, well, I'll be over this in a few days. Mm -hmm. And you're over the cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, but there we are. You'll have what you say. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm going to be over it in a few days. Well, that's where your faith was at. Yeah. That it was going to run its course. Okay. <laughs> and that's the way it was going to happen. Yeah. You heard me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My brother over here with Daisy, he's yeah. getting... <laughs> I like this. But I know, I know I've know. I've told you all the story about my get-off off my water truck. And I I fell off this, this water truck and I hooked my toe in the bumper. My front of my truck is about this high. And I mean, it turned me a flip and knocked me on the ground. And I hear my leg snapping as I'm going off there. And all I said was, Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. When I hit the ground, I was healed. There's an immediately thing. I released my faith. I just, and I mean, it's not a long, lengthy prayer, but I went to the source of the healing. Yeah. The power. The power. Yeah. Right there. Bam, bam, I'm healed that quick. I hit the ground, I'm healed. Yeah. There's a little scruff up right there. And I, and I know I've said it before. I was getting ready to preach this message. Position, heal yourself. A lady comes running from next door and she says, I'm back up, I'm checking for my cell phone and belt buckle and all this, doing a little inventory. She said, are you okay? I said, well, let me see here. And I said, well, my knee's out of my joint. Should I go get Ken? And I'm getting ready to pre preach a message from, Matt, from Luke 4. It says, physician, heal yourself. My knee's out of joint. So I just laid hand on myself and back, this back. I said, forget about it. <laughs> You can lay hands on yourself. Yes, yes, yes. You know, don't be shy. Amen. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. If you're sick, lay hands on yourself. Amen. Believe God that will watch after His Word and perform it. Hallelujah. 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 But right there in that, immediately, was Hebrews 11.1. 1. Anybody got it? It says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is now. Hope is in the future. We have a confident hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we're on our way to heaven. We believe Him with all our hearts, that we're going there and we live in this confident hope. Amen?
But that's another thing too, and, and I said that a little earlier about uh, Romans 8, the first verse. It says, therefore, now, right now, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ that walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. I'm going to tell you what. Who walk not after our five senses, our taste, our touch, our sight, our ear, hearing, and whichever other one I left out there. We don't go by those. Yeah, see, that's it. We get off track. But we're not. We're the righteousness of God. The righteous one is living in us. We are not condemned. We miss the mark sometimes. But God is faithful. He gave us a way out. Amen? Have you got it? You know that way out. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, oh, yes. He is faithful and just yes. to cleanse us. Yes. From all unrighteousness. Yes. Just as if we never sinned. See people, we need to start getting a sin unconsciousness about us instead of a sin consciousness. So you see, that, the devil uses that. He gets us in fear yeah. all the time. He gets, oh, you did that. You did that. You did that. Dude, we're, we're not seeing what the Word of God is saying to us. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody yeah. here? Yeah. But I mentioned a little earlier too, and this is in the 26th verse. And I wish Chanel would have stayed. They were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen wonderful things today. They were filled with fear and awe and reverence. Brother Ron's Angela, that's your daughter in law, correct? When she gave me testimony, it Liz's celebration of life. Mm -hmm. She said, Liz is a woman who feared God. Mm -hmm. I heard Pastor May talking back to Chanel. I would add it a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. He's going to do some wonderful things for Chanel if she'll start glorifying God. Yeah. He's going to work them wonders in her. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, maybe that word wasn't for her at this moment. Yeah. But him, I was over there in, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 too, where I said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. But I I got to looking down through all our fathers of, of faith there, what I did. Yeah. And it says, by faith, this is when the God really starts getting me on to me about this forgiveness stuff. <laughs> by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. You know, Esau gets a pretty bad rap sometimes. And I'm gonna I'm gonna look over there in the Genesis about this a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment on it a bit. Because I know, I know 
in my heart of heart that God desires that no man should perish. Amen. Tell you what, stay with me now. some deception and things going on. He had a, a mom and a son working against him. But, he, but in the 25th chapter it says, so the boys grew easy. Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field, while Jacob was a calm man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebecca loved Jacob. We're, we're talking about family relations here. And they get messed up sometimes. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody? We get to play in favors. But Esau had come in from the field, family, so did Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me some of that red stew for our family. So therefore his name was Edom. Then Jacob said, First sell me your birthright. Esau said, Look, I'm about to die. What use is that birthright to me? Uh -huh. Of what use? Don't we give ourselves a... What use is this word of God to me right here and now? I need something. I need my flesh taken care of right now and we just uh -huh. cast all aside yes, what yeah. God has said. Yeah. 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 And so he, Esau ate the bread and the little stew. Mm -hmm. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Mm -hmm. But then that... Uh, no, buddy Israel here, he knows a little bit about mm -hmm. Jacob, don't he? Mm -hmm. You ever deceived a little bit? Mm -hmm. Anybody, Israel? Mm -hmm. Israel here got renamed. Mm -hmm. He's a good brother. Mm -hmm. And he can preach, too. I've heard him, heard him do it. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, Esau, he got to conspire, conspired it against again. Dad told him because he liked the, the stew that Esau made from the game he taught. He, he sent his son. He says, go out in the field. Come prepare me some of this stew so that I can bless you. Yeah. Well, Jacob's mom hears that. She loves Jacob. So she says, come on with me. We're going to just go kill this kid goat, you know, and they put him on the hair on his arms, and she gets some of Esau's clothes out of the closet and puts on him, and they Isaac's going a little blind in the eyes, and they slip it up on him. And Isaac blesses him. Jacob. And then he comes back into the field. He comes in, he's done bow and arrow some for, for his dad. Yeah. He's done made him something to eat and goes in to give it to him so he could get his blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and this happens just immediately afterward. He'd already blessed Jacob. Esau comes in. And it says here, then Isaac trembled violently and said, who? Where then is he who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it all before you, and I blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. Wow. And you all know quite a bit of the story going on over there. Mm -hmm. But I looked at this, and I, and I had saw in Hebrews there. It says, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. And in the 39th verse, Isaac, 
you know, I, or the 38th verse, I, and Esau said to his father, do you only have one blessing, my father? Bless me even also, my father. Then Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, your dwelling shall be from the fatness of the earth and away from the and from the dew of heaven from above. You will live by your sword and you will serve your brother. When you become restless, you will break his yoke from your neck. If you went over there, if you went there with me, if you look over, in the 33rd chapter of Genesis, he said Esau had left Laban, his father-in-law, and everything was going. God had told him to go back to the promised land, Canaan. So he's on his way. But Esau is scared to death because after he had stole the blessing, Esau's mad and he said, I'm going to kill him. I mean, he said, I am going to kill him. Well, Jacob don't want to meet his brother. So he sends some gifts out of heaven. You ever try that, husbands? <laughs> With your wives? <laughs> Let's kind of calm down the savage beast we've created here. But anyway, Jacob sends flocks and herds ahead of him and hailed female servants and things. But there's, there's something I saw right here in, about forgiveness. When Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming and 400 men with him, boy, don't you know your heart dropped right then. So he divided the children among the land, Rachel and the two female servants, and put the female servants and their children in front and lay their children next. And then Rachel and Joseph last. He went on before him, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And this right here is the one that got me. Because I'm talking about forgiveness. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. The 40th verse back there in 27. When you shall become restless, you will break his yoke from your neck. Esau went there in forgiveness. Esau is trying to get, Jacob is trying to give him all this stuff. Esau is already blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Esau is already blessed. Yeah. The, he's a descendant of Abraham. Yeah. The blessing of Abraham is upon him. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And Esau did what he needed to do. Yeah. He just run up and loved him. Around he broke that yoke yes. Yes. of unforgiveness yes. off his yes. neck. Yes. Forgiveness is a powerful force. Yes, it is. And if, if we go on and look about it, that's why I said we get it. I know myself have heard from the pulpit. For a long time, what a no good, sorry son of a he saw is. Well, We get angry. Yes. We get mad. Yes, we do. And we do these things. Yeah. But he went to his brother in the spirit of forgiveness. Now when Israel's land returned from uh, Egypt, Oh, 
Yeah, I left one out here I didn't want to see. I wanted to say over on in the 10th verse. And Jacob said this to Esau. Jacob said, Now I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, then receive my gift from my hand. For I have seen your face, and it is though I have seen the face of God, you having received me favorably. Forgiveness, that's the glory of God. Yeah. Now for he saw it in his face. And then in, if we look in Deuteronomy 2.4, When the children of Israel are coming out of Egypt, they uh, are on their way to the promised land. They've been tramping around for 40 years here. See, God loves these children. And Esau was one of God's children too. God loves all his kids. Then Moses spoke to them. They had went around Deuteronomy 2, first verse, when he turned and set out toward the wilderness and by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and we circled Mount Seir for many days. Then the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north, command the people, saying, You are to pass through the territory of your brothers, the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. So carefully watch yourselves. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land. Do no, not so much as a footprint, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau for his possession. You may buy food from them with money so that you may eat, that you may also buy water from them so that you may drink. Hmm. You know, I read quite a bit about Esau on the Pentateuch there, and then I went to the history a little bit. And then Joshua was saying, He said, I took your father Abraham from behind the Euphrates, Euphrates, brought him through all the land of Canaan and gave him many descendants. To him I gave Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. And to Esau I gave Mount Seir for his inheritance. But Jacob and his descendants went into Egypt. Now chapter 35 in Genesis this is the blessing of the Lord. Is yeah. just so much. Mm -hmm. I probably can't find it in Exodus. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but now, Isaac had went home to be with his Lord. And Isaac breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. Being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. But now who the Lord is blessed, we can't curse. Because he goes on, on right here in 36, the seventh verse, and says, For their possessions too great for them, to dwell together in the land where they were foreign could not sustain them because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Esau is a dog. You know, we're, we're all children of God. Yeah. We're all His creation. Yeah. We're not all children of God. But I looked at, at this a bit more. Because when I'm, when I'm doing this, and I, I said to the pastor last weekend, I said, you know, I said, and I said, I wonder if I'm going to see Esau in heaven. And now this, this is my opinion. I could, I 
could be wrong. But when our Lord was crucified on the cross mm -hmm. and our sins were forgiven, yeah. He marched down into hell and took away the keys of sin and death. And he, in Isaiah 6, well, I'm going to look in the fourth chapter of Mark here, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor, and He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah. Well, Jesus went down into hell there and made a show of them openly. Now we know there were two sides back then. The thief on the cross, the two thieves on the cross that are there with Jesus, the one is cursing him and everything else, and the other one says, Oh Lord, that I can be with you this day where you're going. And he says, This day you will see me in paradise. Jesus went on down there and he took away those keys, the keys of the kingdom. He preached the gospel to him because there was nobody born again before then. God does not want any man to perish. Amen. And it says in Romans 5.18 that where sin excuse me I'm getting a little long prayer for ahead of myself here. Until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not counted when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even those who had not sinned in the likeness of Adam's sin, who was a type of him who was to come. So, death reigned because of sin in the world. After Moses, the law was given. The law kept them. Then there were sacrifices made. But God wasn't going to let all His creation go up until that point. Yeah. So He sent His Son to share the good news of the Gospel to Him. To them. Yeah. And He sent a host of captives free. Forgiveness. Yeah. Powerful force that forgives, that heals, that heals us. Yeah. And God can't work in an un unforgiving heart. Right over here in Romans 12, the 18th verse, mm -hmm. he says, If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. God won't ask you to do something that's impossible. Because Romans 5 says, this is the hope we have. That by His Holy Spirit, He has shed His blood abroad in our hearts. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word today. Now, in the name of Jesus, I claim, I claim health and healing over each and every one that heard this word this day. That they will walk in the spirit of love and not in unforgiveness. That they will judge themselves, not condemn themselves, but that they will judge themselves in their actions that they may be healed. That your faith can work in each every man, woman, and child. Hearing this word today, that it was, it was in good soul, it's water, Lord. And Lord, we believe that we will see 
and increase in their bodily health, in the relation health, and the health of their finances. Because God, you are a God that cares of every aspect of our lives. We praise you, and we thank you, and we give you all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.